I'd like to show you how to tie a, a tile rig, at least how I like to tie a tile rig. You can tie it any way you want, take this and run with it, or you know, stick with your own ways, or get some ideas from what I'm doing and run with it, etc. So, either way. I'm recording this basically for myself because this is my favorite rig and I'm uh, going to put down all the components that you see here where I got them from so I don't tie tile rigs every year but when I do um, I know where to go get my components my parts if you will so take this for what it's worth so we need to start every video off proper and give it a hi George What's up, bro? How you doing, Georgie? All right. So I'm using 80 pound fluoro. Oh, you don't necessarily need to use that. A lot of people say that's overkill. I'd agree with that, but it's all good. So the first thing I put on is a fish finder, followed by a glow bead that you see here. Big stack of glow beads. And a lot of people use crimps, three ways, etc., so on and so forth. I use a drop of lube. So, I will continue tying with the drop of lube. possible. Yeah, I'm not going to say one way is better than another with a uh, crimps. Yeah. Alright, that's a good length. So basically you want, this is the bottom, so that's your bottom loop, and you want another dropper loop, so we do two hooks, you know, about 8 to 12 inches from first, so we'll make that happen, you don't want the first, this top dropper loop so long that it's going to impede on the bottom. So, you know, put that with enough distance. Looks good to me. Alright, so there you have it. And on the bottom, goes, what I use is a uh, snap lock with a barrel swivel for my weight, and this is just a straight up terminal knot. The only real trick to this is don't give this too much length. You want this bottom hook to be able to hit basically the bottom of the seabed. This tile, you never know, you might be dragging across one, dragging across a monkfish, whatnot. So, um, make sure that that's pretty good. Give yourself some cush. Because that, everything's going to have jewelry, which we haven't gotten to yet, so just bear with me. Just like I said, straight up terminal knot, nothing to see there. 
isn't a not tying class. This is just to show you the order of events with jewelry, etc., and whatnot. So that's how that will sit. So I'm in an unfinished basement. Luckily enough, I have things to make things easily consistent. So probably making this. I don't know what's a basement. The height. Straight up barrel rig, barrel, swivel, I should say. Now the terminal knot. Drop of loops. The uh, bottom snap, barrel swivel for your weight, and now we're ready to do some jewelry. All right, this is where things get interesting. So what I like to do is use some glow tube, and with the glow tube, it helps to make this stand out perpendicular from the uh, line itself. So you can tie a knot, straight up surgeon knot. You want to give yourself enough length here to put on the rest of the jewelry. And until you kind of do this, you'll get a feel for where that should go. Sometimes if the dropper loop is uh, really long, you can get away with two knots. But that'll do for now. And the same with this, this one's a little shorter, so we'll, we'll bring this one in closer to, uh, let's call it the, the, the drop line, if you will. So we have those things. So I normally have some of this pre-cut. These are kind of small for where we're going. So you measure this out a little bit, give yourself enough length to, like I said, put on the jewelry, but still meet the um, drop line and um, put on the rest of your jewelry. So, you know, make it work. Put this uh, glow tube on. So it's called glow tube, I believe, the chafing tube, glow chafe tube. See that, see how that helps? on this guy same thing all right so that's how that should look at this point And then we start adding more glow jewelry and glow beads. All right. So what what I have here is uh, glow beads. So we'll add that between the glow chafe tube. We're gonna add a hoochie skirt, followed by another glow bead. And the hook. Can't forget the hook. Alright, these are Nino Mustads. I will put the exact make and model on these things. And this is where whether you've made it too long or too short comes into mind. Whether you can get all that jewelry on to your um, 
drop a loop. All right, so let's finish over here. Hopefully this one will, this one gives me plenty of line. Actually, I can tell right away. So glue bead, once again, hoochie skirt. Now the glow bead. I like the glow bead between the hoochie skirt and the hook itself. Give yourself some distance from the, the hook. A captain the hook. Alright. And uh, if anything's amiss, that's the best part about a dropper loop. Just take it take it apart. So see how this lays. Want these hooks going downhill, right? Pointing up. So that looks pretty freaking good if you ask me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Alright. So that's where the hook would be. That's where your bottom weight would be. You might be wondering what it is that the first thing we put on was for, which was a fish finder followed by a glow bead. And that is for this thing from China. It is a um, deep drop light. A little cheap little thing. Wet it up so you can put one of these on. I don't think I'm wearing the right place. As soon as this hits the water, this thing is off the rails. And obviously, the deeper it gets, the darker it gets, the brighter it gets. So it's all good. It's obviously not going to stay on there while I package it up, but just want to show you for demo purposes the reason why I did that. So you may think, oh, that's it, we're done. Package it up, Megatore. We are going to add some more bling. The bling that we're adding are these two inch. glow sticks. So I've got some glow sticks. We're going to tape on with some Gorilla Tape. Obviously we're not going to activate them because that would be dumb. But when, when we're ready to use this rig, break it out of its packaging, we want everything ready to go because you never know what kind of seas they're going to be. You never know how you're going to be feeling. And most likely you're going to be feeling like you want blue can in your hand. So, therefore you want everything ready to go so there's nothing stopping you between catching a 40 pound tile and rubbing it in your friend's face with your own rig as opposed to a store-bought rig. So that's all I do is I tie it on there, just give it some, give it something to tie on to. That's also the bonus part of the glow chafing tube. <clears throat> so all these components what you want to do is try to buy in bulk. So on any night during the winter time when baseball ain't on and uh, all the other sports suck on TV Go down to your basement or wherever your happy place is and buy some rigs. That looks fabulous. Like I said, I don't know why that's not sitting right, but if I need to. Like I said, it's, it's the beauty part of uh, drop a loop. Make it work. We'll mess with it. It's good. It's good the first way. Alright. So that's how that will sit. You 
with your fish finder right in the middle. This is your weight. And this is the top of your, your line. And when you break this out of the packaging, crack these open to activate them. Put on your deep drop, whatever color you want to use, green, white, blue, red. Roll with it. Put some clam and squid on there. Catch yourself a tile. Break yourself out of a little plastic bag. Label it properly. Tile. Deep drop. And boom. You are off to the races. Like I said, you're saving yourself a lot of money, tying it yourself. giving yourself confidence that you are going to catch the pool winner and uh, if you ain't your buddy fishing with the same rig that you tied is going to catch the pool winner and you could rub it in his face saying that was my rig you caught the pool winner on you know what I'm saying so either way point is, is to go out there and enjoy yourself, catch some nice tile, golden tile. Alright, hi George, peace out.